Hello grade 11s and welcome to another lesson on the topic intermolecular forces. Today we look at forces that exist in compounds that contain ionic bonds. An ionic bond involves the transfer of electrons between atoms. Ionic bonding usually occurs between metals and nonmetals. In ionic bonding, one of the atoms has a much higher electronegativity than the other. The atom with a higher electronegativity removes the unpaired electron or electrons from the other atom. This diagram shows the formation of sodium chloride as a result of ionic bonding. Sodium, the metal, has one unpaired valence electron. Chlorine, the nonmetal, also has one unpaired valence electron. The metal loses or transfers its valence electron to the nonmetal. The transfer of electrons normally occurs from the metal to the nonmetal. The sodium is left as a positive ion and the chlorine becomes a negative ion. The positive and negative ions are held together in a rigid 3D ionic lattice such as the one shown in this diagram. A lattice is an orderly arrangement of positive and negative ions. Let's now look at intermolecular forces in mixtures of ionic compounds. When an ionic substance such as sodium chloride dissolves, it dissociates into its ions. These ions separate and intermolecular forces form with other molecules present. Ion dipole forces occur when an ionic solute is dissolved in a polar covalent solvent. The example here is sodium chloride dissolved in water. The water molecules individually cannot remove the ions from the lattice as the forces are not strong enough to overcome the forces between the ions within the lattice. However, combined forces of many water molecules can overcome the ionic forces and pull ions out of the lattice. The polar water molecules surround the ions in such a way that their opposite pole faces the ion. The negative sides of the water molecules face the positive N, A, plus ion. And the positive sides of the water molecules face the negative C, L, minus ion. The polar covalent water molecules keep the dissociated ions in solution. Ion dipole forces are the forces of attraction between an ionic compound and a polar covalent compound. There is this saying in chemistry that like dissolves like. What this means is that if the solute and solvent are both polar or if they are both nonpolar, that the solute will dissolve easily in the solvent. However, if one of the substances is polar and the other is nonpolar, then the solute will not dissolve in the solvent. Ions can technically be classified as polar as they are positively or negatively charged. This is why ionic substances dissolve so well in polar covalent solvents. The next type of intermolecular forces that we will look at is ion-induced dipole forces. Ion-induced dipole forces exist between substances that are ionic and nonpolar substances that form induced dipoles. The presence of the dissociated positive and negative ions induces a positive and negative side of the nonpolar atom or molecule. The result is a force of attraction between the ion and the induced dipole. For example, the hemoglobin molecule in blood contains Fe2 plus ions. The oxygen molecule is nonpolar, but a dipole is induced by the ions so that the oxygen is attracted to it. Because ions can be regarded as polar and substances with induced dipoles are basically nonpolar, ionic substances do not dissolve well in nonpolar solvents. So, to recap, ion dipole forces are forces of attraction between an ionic compound and one that is polar covalent. Ion induced dipole forces exist between substances that are ionic and substances that form induced dipoles. These are substances that are naturally nonpolar. That's all for now. Try the task video questions, and you can also find out more information on this topic at www.mindset.co.za/learn. 
Until then, goodbye.